Simplified Chaos, Episode 15. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to start leading a more purposeful life. This is Simplified Chaos. Welcome, welcome, friends. This is Jillian, one of your hosts, and I'm with my husband and my other host, or not my host, but the host of this podcast. Your host. <laughs> the hostess with the mostest. Yes. Nick. What's going on, folks? <laughs> so what are we diving into today, Jilly? Today we're swan diving into the beautiful topic of boredom. This makes me bored. What? I'm kidding. I bore you. This bores me. <laughs> Don't fall asleep on me, please. No. Well, it is, what have we got? 8.23 on Sunday night. We're recording a day later. We'll get into that in a reason, the reason why in just a minute. So boredom. That's what we're doing today. Yeah. So today uh, we're going to dive into kind of what our definition is of boredom. Okay. How we've welcomed more boredom into our lives and how being quote unquote bored has led to positive changes in our life. I have a feeling by the end of this episode, you guys won't think that we're bored, pe- boring people. Well, it's just perspective. I mean, some people yeah. will view we're boring, some people may not. So it is what it is. So yeah, you know, we're talking about <laughs> boredom. You're not going to be bored. It's going to be fun. <laughs> so before we get into that, let's talk a little gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. What are you gra- grateful for today, Jill? I keep <laughs> switching it up on you. <laughs> Today, I am grateful for my lovely tatas. Tatas. Not tatas. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm grateful for those <laughs> all the time. So for those who are new to the podcast, um, I we have a 10. She's officially 10 months today. Yeah. Which is crazy. Our daughter, Two Lucille. Two months and one year birthday party at the brewery. We haven't planned that yet. No, we'll It's a celebration of us making it through one year. I'm... Yes, I do believe a one-year birthday for a baby should be to celebrate the parents because yes. the baby's not going to remember it anyway. No. But anyway. Um, Back to titties. I'm grateful for my titties because I'm still breastfeeding. And I remember that feeling in the beginning how I was like, I don't know how people can breastfeed for like one to two to even three years yeah. because it seemed so tough and stressful. And now it's second nature and... You know, I went away on my little getaway with my mom and my sister, and I kept thinking, like, I miss Lucille falling asleep on me. And I overheard my sister talking, um, I guess, when Lucille took a nap on you, Mm -hmm. how, like, that was only the second time Lucille's fell asleep on you. And I almost feel like I take that for granted because she falls asleep on me all the time. Yeah. Because usually the nip's still in the mouth, and she's just always asleep on me. And when I heard that you said that, I was like, oh, my God, like... I can't believe that's she, only the second time she's fell asleep on you. And well, she, she only likes it when I'm time. standing up. Like, she is very fussy when I sit down when I'm holding her. Like, she would rather me stand up than... So, yeah, that was the second, and then the third time was this morning. And um, tonight, while you were setting up for the podcast, um, we were in our rocker, and she was feeding, and then just kind of stopped and kept, like, looking around. She didn't really seem interested in the boob anymore. So I put my shirt down and she kind of just like looked around and then she just laid her head on my chest, like Aww. shirt on, like yeah, not trying to get any more boob and just, just kept looking up and then, then getting off and then just nuzzling back on me, like not trying to drink or anything. And are you getting teary eyed? No, but I think you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm good. But I've never had her nuzzle on me like that without trying to feed and it was really freaking. She's changing. She is. She's and, changing. Gosh, it was, she fell asleep on me tonight without trying to drink, and it was magical. Yeah, we're, we're now in that I, transition stage. Now I kind of know what it's like in your perspective. When she's like nuzzling on you, it's pretty dang cute. Yeah. Well, that kind of, are you done with your gratitude? I, I am. Because <laughs> that transition, transitions into my gratitude segment, which was um, daddy time, like daddy duty, if you want to call it that. Not babysitting. Not babysitting. I'm not babysitting my kid. It's being a dad. I don't know if anybody else does that, any moms out there, but when 
I remember when you first watched Lucille by yourself, I was like, oh, you're, can you babysit tonight? And you're like, what's well, not really babysitting, Joe? Like, I am the dad. I'm like, <laughs> shit, you're right. Like, we don't call it babysitting when mom has to watch her. Right. But for some reason, when the dad does, like, I automatically go to, can you babysit? But yeah. it's really, because can you watch your daughter? <laughs> yeah. Now, I'll tell you what, that was the first time that I had Lucille throughout the night. Um, definitely don't take you for granted anymore. But, you know, you left uh, around 11 o'clock yesterday in the morning, and I, it was probably a solid 24 hours that I was with her, just me, and we had a great day. We went to Total Wine and browsed some spirits. And Giving her the old liquor uh Yeah, just pep going talk. down the aisles. Education and, there. Yeah, you know, talked about different... Uh, mixing materials and stuff like that did you show her those luxardo cherries like that giant, so i totally the $90? botched this trip and i didn't even get them and what? or walk by them and that was part of the reason oh why i was there God, those cherries are really yeah, magical i know i can't believe it you have to take her back it's failed just, oh yeah well now i have a reason to go back there exactly but you know she's been a little under the weather for the first time uh in the last three days um i'm not sure if it's allergies but you know she's not running a fever or anything like that but you know her one eye is watering her nose is stuffy and her ears may itch um you know we we try not to look too far into it because she's not being totally fussy she's sleeping through the night so it's not an emergency where we have to go to the doctor but you know it's just nice you know being with her yesterday and having some father-daughter time and she fell asleep on me last night, you know, going to bed without a bottle, you know, so without the tatas, my tatas. And, you know, this morning, you know, the same thing. She woke up, was a little fussy. It was not her normal routine, but she just, she woke up and within an hour she needed a nap already. Yeah. I figured it out. It took me a while to figure it out, but I got to learn a little bit about her. Um, you know, last night I was up with her for about an hour and 15 minutes just because, you know, she woke up, I rocked her back to sleep, and as soon as I put her in her crib, she woke up, did the same thing, and I was like, all right, maybe she needs a diaper change. Change the diaper, and then put her back to sleep, and then woke up again, and I'm like, all right, let's just try the bottle. And it worked. It's all about experimenting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, I, you know, it was funny, because the first time I went in there, the second I picked her up, she fell back asleep, so I was like, she's not hungry. At least that's <laughs> the way I thought about it. But, you know, it was it was a great night. Like, we had a wonderful time. We had a great morning. And I can do it again, babe, if you need a, if you need a one-night getaway. Good to Just know. don't make it two nights. I had a fun time. <laughs> I miss Lucille like crazy, but um, I had a great time with my mom and my sister. And we weren't that far away. We just went to Frederick and stayed in an Airbnb and had some delicious food and lots of strolling, which I love a good walk in, a, like, a cute town and... Yeah, it was it was a great weekend. Yeah, no, no, I'm glad you guys got to a chance to enjoy it and have a nice ladies' weekend, and it was nice being at home with uh, with Lucille. So, all good. Yeah. All right, you ready to dive into boredom? Let's do it. I bet people. Are I had like, to take my hoodie off because it's hot in here. <laughs> Thanks for the play by play. Yes. Um, Bad radio. <laughs> so I figured we would start with kind of our definition of boredom. Yeah. Because uh, I feel like. It can have a lot of different meanings, and I think it's also about perspective with being bored and how you take it and how boredom has changed over the years, yeah. um, how much boredom we had before growing up, and then how much boredom there is now. Yeah. Um, but do you want me to start first with my definition, or well, do you want to go first? I want to go first. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So boredom is that one, like that one summer I had where I thought I had mono, and it turns out I was really bored. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys get the reference. It's Wayne's World. Anyways, <laughs> I had to do that. Like when she told me that we were going to talk about the definition, I was like, the first thing that popped in my mind was Wayne's World. And he was just like, yeah, oh, I just thought I had mono, Excellent. but it turns out I was really bored. Like I think boredom is is when you absolutely have nothing to do. You probably do have something to do. You may make an excuse not to have you know, to do it. But you just sit around and you just don't have motivation to, to do anything. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I just okay. It's one of those things where I think people go through those phases and it, it may have, you know, like a mental health kind of, you know, connotation with it too. Like sometimes you may be bored because 
you think people are doing other things that you're not doing and you're just going to sit at home and do nothing about it. But, you know, I think, you know, boredom and, and we'll dive into it is, is a good way to spark a lot of creativity and, and do things that you may not normally do. Your definition is definitely different than mine. It's probably more textbook. Did you look it up online? No, I didn't. But that, I feel like that <laughs> would probably be like a textbook or what somebody might say. So you're saying boredom is when you have no motivation. I think so. Um, no, it's just interesting because it's completely different than mine. <laughs> I think boredom it means living life like you're in the 90s. <laughs> um, what a great decade. Let me uh, elaborate, though. Um, so I think I used to view the word boredom as a negative, mm-hmm. and that completely have changed, has changed since... Um, simplifying our life and having Lucille and just changing our mindset. Um, and I kind of think the word boredom is synonymous to mindfulness. Okay. Because I feel like when you're bored, that is the time where you can focus on how you're feeling, how you're, where you are, your environment, what's around you. It like gives you that time and energy to just be. Right. You're not stimulated. You're not doing something. You're just in your body, where you are, and you're present. So I view boredom as being mindful. And I think being mindful is really important, especially in the times we're living in now, because there are so many distractions and yes. technology is blowing up, which is not a bad thing. But I no. feel like because it's everywhere, we it's almost become a reflex. And I can even admit it. Like, having my phone and looking at my phone and going on my phone it has become a reflex and I really hate that and I don't like to use the word hate a lot but I don't like that it's become a reflex that I just I always want to look at it when I'm standing in line when I'm sitting on the couch and you know I may not be doing anything and I'm really trying hard to change that and I'm already noticing changes in trying to put boundaries on that and trying to have more boredom or have more mindfulness in my life. Do you think that technology causes boredom or may promote boredom like in a bad way, in a negative way? Well, if Whereas I think- it, where you could be at home, you probably could be doing something, but you're browsing around on Instagram or, or Facebook because you're quote unquote bored. Well, if I think boredom is synonymous to mindfulness, I don't think technology causes mindfulness. I think it distracts us from being mindful. I think it distracts us from boredom. Okay. I think we're afraid of boredom. No, that might be it. And there could be a deeper root of that. Like some people may have more distractions in their life or go to technology because they may be sad about something in their life or they may have pain in their life and maybe they don't want to be alone with their thoughts or be alone to just sit there and you know when you're mindful you you dig deep into what you're thinking about like right. whether it's presently past future but i think some people may be trying to cover up that by distractions or they're so used to that habit of going to the phone because that's just the society we're in now that it's just second nature and it's it's almost like a bad habit like smoking like yeah the minute you sit down and not doing anything, it's like, oh, let me pick up my phone. I mean, I feel like people even in conversation with somebody that they, they start looking at their phone is because they're bored with whatever it is they're talking about. So, well, you, with your definition, it could be, but I don't know. I, I feel like it can go both ways. Yeah. I feel like you could not be stimulated enough, so you go to your phone, but there's various reasons you could go to your phone. You could go to your phone to be distracted even more, which means just like mm-hmm. searching mindlessly on Instagram or Facebook, or you could go to your phone to get stimulated by reading an article or looking at the news or, you know, doing something that's different. I think there are pros and cons to technology, and I think we're going to dive into that more about, yeah. I guess, how to use technology so it's bringing more happiness versus distracting you from right. bringing you value and doing what's meaningful to you. Cool. But, um, yeah. I just like how our definitions are like completely different. I think it's kind yeah, of cool. Yeah, I just, I feel like, I know I've taken boredom and turned it into a positive, but if you ask like the old me, like boredom is, I, I in my head, it's more of a negative thing that can be turned into a positive. And I, I feel like, and I'm sure we'll probably talk about kids and boredom at, at some point as well, but I feel like we diagnose kids with ADD 
Oh, you're really you're going yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, I'm going there right now. Um, <laughs> but I, I feel like you know, in, in a lot of those cases, it may be a matter of boredom, mm. and so they get easily distracted. They're not stimulated yeah, enough. They're not stimulated. They're not interested. Yeah, and I think that's you know one of those things where we, uh, I don't know, if big pharma is involved in that or not. But I mean, it's like okay, well, let's give the kid big you pharma know, pharmacies. Oh, I've, I don't think I've ever heard it been called that. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I think it's a way that we can start, you know, drugging kids. I mean, no, they're, they're, and don't get me wrong, there are kids who actually have ADD or ADHD um, and, and, you know, may need that stuff. But I, I feel like it all stems from not being stimulated, which I equate to boredom. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I'm going there, but. You did go there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to talk about kind of how we invited more boredom or in my mindset, how do we, how have we, how have we invited more mindfulness into our lives? So we're not, we're not always distracted by technology. And I keep saying technology because I think that's the biggest thing in our life. We're using it in a broad term. We're not being, you know, specific. Yes, like TV, phone, internet. Like anything. Social media. I mean, it could be technology that was invented, you know, in the 60s, like TV. Yes, no, for sure. Um, So I thought some of the ways that we have tried to cut some of that distraction to make Mm -hmm. our lives more meaningful and just to bring bring us more happiness and joy is we have welcomed more friction in our lives. So putting friction in Watching television. I'd like to get some friction. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, well, we decided to cut the cable. We did. We, we are, quote unquote, cord cutters. And because we have less channels to choose from, it's not as easy to just turn on the TV and watch something. There's a couple more steps in order to watch YouTube TV. And I feel like we, we don't watch as much TV anymore we because don't. it's not as easy to access as it used to be. And... There's not as many shows like I used to love watching HT, HTV yeah. a lot, but I feel yeah. like after Chip and Joanna, after we cut cable and I realized it didn't really bring as much joy as I thought. Like, well, you're paying almost 200, maybe even upwards of 250, just depending on what your setup is. Yeah. And you're getting a bajillion channels. But really, when it comes down to it, you're only watching maybe 10 to 15 of those channels. True. And it's just like, well, why am I paying all that money for that? And so one of the reasons we switched to YouTube TV is because they have the sports, they have ESPN and, and everything. And that's really what I watch TV for. And yes, you know, when, when we had HGTV, I would watch that with you and Randy and, you know, it'd just be another thing for us to sit around and quote unquote family bonding or whatever. But I don't know about you. I shows that I thought I couldn't live without I don't or miss I them. I don't either and no. I I think the only way you realize that is by doing a, a little experiment and just getting rid of it for at least a month or two months and just see how you feel and it's like yeah. shows that you thought like I can't miss it's like I I'm okay how many nights in a week would you say that the TV's actually on when we're we're, we're together at home which is pretty much every night during the week is zero just, yeah. At least for I'd me, say, I would watch say sports. I watch hockey. Yeah, when I go to bed, yeah. but during the week, I, I mean, we don't. We may no, watch we a watch chef, uh, Chef's Table on Friday night on Netflix. It's on the weekend though. Yeah, but I don't turn on the TV pretty much at all. No, and I will you admit, trash once TV I was gonna say <laughs> when it's raining, and sometimes I'm like, uh, I, I'll feel like watching something like full of drama because there's really no drama in my life, which I love. I will turn on Vanderpump Rules. I'm guilty of watching this, yes, and Summer House, and but that is like nothing. Like maybe once a week. It's only if there's like bad weather because I'm yeah. I'm going to be outside walking Lucille. Oh, definitely. Um, so I think cutting the cable has definitely led more time just for us to be mindful or just to fill what void we did have with something more meaningful versus just watching television. Well, I'll say one of the biggest things that we've been able to do is, you know, even though we record this podcast one night a week or we don't only do it once a week, like there's actually a lot of prep that actually goes into it. You know, we have to talk about a topic. We want to talk about, you know, what questions we want to ask, but then we have to do our own like research or, or think about what we want to talk about. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we, and I think I've said in, in past podcasts, you know, we have a schedule and cutting TV out has allowed us to, you know, put this podcast on, 
and not be stressed about it. Like it's not something that every week I'm stressed about. It's like this weekend's kind of stressful because you're gone Saturday night, which is usually when we, we do that. So, which means we have to do it tonight, which we have to put it together a little bit quicker, but you know, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Well, I guess that kind of ties into like, how has that affected our life in a positive way? Well, because we cut cable and because we don't watch as much TV, this idea to have a podcast was born. Yeah. And then we filled the the void of instead of watching TV, we filled that with, you know, doing research and stuff for the podcast. Mm-hmm. So I feel like and that is so much more meaningful. I don't know about you, but just doing the podcast has brought me so much more meaning because we're actually reaching people that can relate and yeah. you know, we're helping people versus just mindlessly looking at television right. and, you know, for an hour, two hours a night, which we used to do. Yeah. Shit, I would probably do it for three hours because I would stay up at least another hour after you went to bed. So I feel like that's one great advantage is yeah. the fact that we're doing this podcast. This would have never been born if we didn't have more boredom. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I want to kind of stick on that technology subject as well because I, I, I really like what the phone manufacturers and, and more importantly, like like what Android and Apple are doing and that is setting timers on apps. Um, mm-hmm. You can set a timer on how long you can spend on Instagram. You can spend a uh, put a timer on YouTube for how long you're watching videos. And once you reach that limit, it'll cut you off. Now you can bypass it and and you know say okay, well, don't yeah. do that. But I mean, if you're really serious about you know trying to do other things in life, you know, utilize those those things that these companies are now giving us. Like they've even realized that. We have too much screen time on our phones, and they're trying to give people ways to be a little bit more healthy. Yeah, well, and it's all about health too. You know, it's it's not healthy to be on your phone twenty four hours. That's a little exaggerated, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, you see people, you know, families that are out at dinner, and every single one of them are on their phone, and I'm just like, that's really sad. Like you can't have, but that's what a genuine conversation now. Like it's like we have to we have to live like we have to. Like I said, it's boredom is like living in the nineties. Like we have to go back to that time yeah. period and be and be living like that. Like that's just how it is now. And it's it's really difficult because everyone around you is doing the complete opposite. So it's almost like kind of living the way we're living, like simplifying and not buying as much and, you know, avoiding yeah. consumerism and it's it's really hard because we're going against the green, which is sure. really difficult. But I will say that I'm guilty. Like I, I use those timers on Instagram, and it'll say you've gone past your time. Do you want to? And I always say, oh, I'm gonna remind me in another 15 minutes. <laughs> so those boundaries don't work for me. So I have to find yeah. another way. And I know I was talking to you about that. I got off of Facebook, so I'm not on Facebook anymore. So that has definitely cut down my time on oh, my yeah. phone. But now I'm trying something new. It's like a new experiment to set boundaries because I realize that timer thing on my phone is not for me, and it might work for some people. Sure. But I know I was tell- telling you that I want to have like a parking space for my phone at the house. And when I come in, I want to put it there and I don't want to I don't want to have easy access or it's right by me right. all the time. Like if Lucille's doing something, I-, I may take a photograph or a video, but I'm trying to set rules and boundaries inside the house. So that way I can put friction between me and Instagram and Instagram is like the the biggest. Yeah distraction for me like it's a it's a great well, you're tool. our instagram marketer too. i know so it's it's trying to find that balance of using it the best i can with a with a, a really good purpose but then catching when i'm going into that mindless scrolling or just looking at insta stories for like you know 10 minutes goes into 20 minutes yeah. goes into 30 minutes and it's crazy how that time flies and i'm thinking like all that time that i spend on instagram doing some of those things that aren't as meaningful like i could have been doing something else right well talking about a parking space for your phone i mean i think you're already halfway there i mean tell people what you do where you park your phone at night you don't put it on your nightstand (laughs) no so i purposely got rid of my nightstand so that way i didn't have my phone right by my bed and now the charger is actually it's actually in the kitchen so i charge my phone during the day in the kitchen um, and I bring my phone and I keep it in my bathroom because I still use it for an alarm so I can still hear it because our bathroom is attached to our bedroom, mm-hmm. but I put it so I can't reach it. So when I'm in bed, I can't just 
hold up my arm and grab my phone and look at it whenever. You're not a snoozer. You have to get up and, and turn the alarm off. And it's working so far. And I've been doing it for what three months now. I I really want to put my phone downstairs, but that means I need an alarm clock. Like I need to really go back <laughs> to the 1990s, and that I kind of want to do that. I had this old Mickey Mouse alarm clock that worked like a charm, and I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm tempted to actually buy an alarm clock. I don't know how you'll feel about that. But. I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. If it has a dual alarm on there where you can set a his and hers alarm, that'd be tight. Yeah. Because then I wouldn't have to keep my phone next to the bed. Would you really do that though? I don't know. You're, there are some nights where I like to, where I will get up and type something if I think of something for work. So it is convenient to have it by my bed. But I, so in the morning when my phone goes off, I'm kind of a nerd. Um, when my when I hit the shut off my alarm, my Google Assistant comes up, reads me the weather, the traffic, um, tells me my calendar for the day and stuff like that because it's tied to the to sh- me shutting the alarm off, and I I like that. But then I find myself picking up the phone and looking at news or, or, or mm. emails, and, and I don't like that part of it. Like, um, just that I'm that's the first thing I'm worried about. I should be just getting up and, you know, doing my morning routine rather than looking. That, that stuff can wait. Like, it's not, I don't need it, but that, that is the one thing that I don't like about having my phone next to the bed. We should try another, ex- you should try an experiment and see if. I know. And if any of you guys have really good tips or anything that have, has worked for you for helping you get off your phone more, we would love to hear it because we're all about trial and error and just experimenting to see what we'll it's like because things. everyone needs different tactics. Like the whole boundaries on the phone, like when it tells you that your time is up, it doesn't work for me. So I'm moving on to plan B and so far it's working for me. It's just baby steps like progress is progress at least i'm trying something so i'm not just saying it's not working and then just giving up like i'm gonna try all the different methods i can because i i do like taking pictures and i do like taking videos of lucille and i do like doing promotion on instagram and i need to set boundaries on when i'm doing things that are meaningful with my phone and separate when i'm not and as soon as i realize when i'm not Mm -hmm. that's when i have to like all right you need to go in a different spot. <laughs> yeah, I agree. People can, it's very easy to get lost in Instagram stories. Like scrolling through the Instagram, you know, it, the Instagram, uh, scrolling <laughs> through Instagram. Um, uh, I don't do as much, but it's like the stories where you can skip over. Like again, like the stories thing I think is kind of genius because you can go through them. But like, if there's nothing that's like intriguing, like right away, people are so quick to skip those and you can skip it really easily it's because we're instant gratification. Exactly. Now. We don't see what we want. It's like, but loop, as a loop. marketer, I just find Insta stories just very intriguing because you have to capture the attention right off the bat. Yeah. That's all I'll say about that. Um, but yeah, so, um, didn't I like guess- the Forrest Gump. No. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I'm in the zone. I'm like trying to think of what we're going to talk about next. I'm just, I'm, I'm so in sorry. a goofy mood right now. So my Sunday apologies. Sunday night yeah. giggles. <laughs> Sunday night. Um, so since cutting cable and since I got off Facebook and since I've started putting boundaries on technology, some of the positives that it's brought in my life is that I have more time for connection and conversation with family. Like we'll sit at the couch and we will just, we will just talk. I think like, that's highly important. I think some people are afraid of dead silence. They're afraid of a moment when someone's not talking, but those are when the thoughts that spark ideas, creativity come. And it's okay. Like, I feel like your true friends and family can sit with you in silence and it'd be completely okay. I will say, I I think that's one of the unique things about our relationship is, you know, I think in the car, we can sit there in silence and just enjoy the music or whatever and not have to have a conversation all the time. But I think it's just nice that we just like being around each other and don't constantly have to say something, even though we, we talk a lot. Um, you know, we talk at our, we go on our date nights and talk and we'll have that date night episode soon, guys. We're going to try to leave that as a cliffhanger. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like that we can sit in silence together and it's not awkward or anything like that. And we're not looking at our phones or anything like that. It's like, we're just being. Yep. Um, so another positive is that I ha- I'm i reading more books about topics for personal growth than I ever have before. Yeah. And I was a huge fiction reader. And now I'm kind of out of my fiction phase. And now I'm just into, I don't, I don't want to call them self-help books, but kind of self-help. 
Like I'm just reading a lot of books that are just instilling positive things in my mind to prime my mind to be the best person that I can be. And it's led to so many positive changes in my life mm-hmm. since doing that. So since cutting cable and putting boundaries on technology, um, I'm reading more and I like it and I'm listening to more podcasts that interest me. That's adding more meaning and value to my life than anything on technology or television show could. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things, you know, I kind of want to piggyback off of that because one of the positives I've had is that I'm actually able to like take free courses to help improve, you know, my marketing skills and background. You know, I've got a, an email course that I'm getting ready to take. And then I'm following that up with a blog course. And then, Oh really? Oh yeah. Like that. there's, there's Look some you, really, babe. yeah, you? yeah I just it's things that I'm interested in. You know, I, I want to, you know, improve what I'm doing, you know, with my career. So, and, and you know, help the company that, I, that I'm working with. So I have time to do that if I'm not watching TV. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know you were doing that. Yeah. Um, another positive is just more creativity. You never know what you're doing down there when I'm going to bed. <laughs> Sorry. I don't. I really don't. You go to bed um, early. I know. We're past your bedtime, by the way. <laughs> but um, I feel like we have been a lot more creative since yeah. since uh, disconnecting and having more time to just think. I mean, just doing this is is takes a lot of creativity. And just I'm I bl- I blog more when I have time mm-hmm. to myself and when I'm not constantly putting distractions in front of me. Um, I can think of new recipe creations for my blog. I I mean we've come up with um, podcast content before. Just mm-hmm. sitting in the car, like after I listen to a podcast on my way to work, and that's another thing I've been doing. I listen to one podcast on the way to work, and after that, I just cut it off and I listen to silence on the way to work. And I used to be afraid of listening like to, to nothing on the way to work. I thought like I always had to fill that void of silence in the car. But once I realized, once I was com- get I got comfortable with being uncomfortable with the silence. I all these ideas would start sparking in my head. It wouldn't come right away, but eventually, like I would think of something from that episode I just listened to, and it would resonate with me. And then it would make me think of an idea that we could do, and then it piggyback to a an episode maybe we could do for the podcast or how it could help my life. And I think sometimes we are quick to fill a void because we're afraid that nothing is going to come from boredom. Right. But it so does, and it just takes time and practice. I don't know if that makes sense, but it takes practice to be alone with your thoughts to be bored and it mindful does. like being mindful like almost like meditating like being alone with your thoughts sometimes it takes people are practice. scared to be alone with their thoughts too that's true but you have to be comfortable with yourself and i feel like if you're not comfortable with being alone with your thoughts of being bored then i feel like you need to find the root cause and yeah. try to deal with that as soon as possible because well, maybe talk to somebody else get support yeah get for support sure. yeah i i agree So, yeah, it's led to creativity in our lives for the podcast, in my classroom, at work. Uh, Just overall, I'm just, I'm excited to try new things now. Like, the ideas that pop into my head, I'm like, I don't know how I thought of that, but it sparked because I had time to think. Yeah. I think we're not giving ourselves enough time to just think. (laughs) No, I agree. We're constantly, like, filling, filling, filling. Yeah, and that's, again, I think that's kind of where the the phone comes in, where we're filling space, where we could be doing something more constructive. You know, a lot of us are looking for purpose in our lives, and we don't find that purpose because we're distracted or we fill it with mindless Mm -hmm. activities. And um, the resource that we're sharing today, I'm going to dive deeper into some research that I heard that was mind-blowing about how technology aids to happiness and how technology cannot lead yeah. to happiness which i was very interested in i'm all i like hearing the science behind things um i also think another positive has been our health yeah i think the more mindful you are the more bored i guess you can call it the more you are connected to your body and how you're feeling and you pay attention to it so you're carefully choosing what you put in your body mm-hmm. foods you know what you know, where, who you surround yourself with, the people, your environment, like once you are aware and you're alone to just look around you and see and feel what's happening in your life, I feel like you take much better care of what you have because you realize how you're feeling. Yeah. And part of that is we're going to be building a garden for us to keep our health. And we're going to know where our food's coming from. You're so excited about your garden. I really am. You're I geeking out actually, about it. <laughs> I think I'm going to go buy the materials this week. I think I'm already a weekend behind, but I want to buy the materials this week, build. 
one bed I think I'm going to build this year and then add right, on okay. to it. Yeah, I think we start with one. One four by eight bed, grow some stuff, see how it goes. And then if everything goes well, we add another bed next year. And you know what's kind of funny is that I thought that I never would have time to garden. Now we but have But now time. that we are getting the distractions out of our life and I'm really excited to spend some meaningful and quality time gardening and I'm more excited to share that with Lucille and learn say, with her. <laughs> this year, we kind of get that learning under our belt. Then next year when she's taking in a little bit more um, and may be able to comprehend what it is that we're doing, well, maybe we at least know what we're doing. But even the best learning <laughs> happens when you don't know what you're doing. So yeah, that way you teach your does. kids that we're learning together. I don't know everything. We make mistakes. Like we're on the same page. I am not higher than you are. Like. I feel like that's kind of cool too to just to show it you and your kid are equals in that we're in it together. Absolutely. Um, so another positive I also had was it builds confidence and strength in yourself that, like I said, some people are afraid of boredom and I used to be one of those people. But once you accept boredom, you feel confident in your thoughts and you're okay to do nothing. You're okay to be disconnected. You're okay to be disengaged because you have other other tools in your tool belt to help you through that boredom just to like hone in on your thoughts or just to look around you and right. see what's around you. And I, I say this all the time that it's going to sound really cheesy, but I stopped bringing my phone when we go on stroller rides and my mom like ring me out. She's like, you need to bring your phone just in case. So I'm probably going to bring it, but I'm going to put it somewhere. So well, it's like out of sight out of mind. We now have that new little cup holder thing that holds a whole bunch of stuff in there i can zip it in you can and, zip it in yes. there and like you don't have it but yeah in case you get held up or I whatever know. my mom I, i'm just gonna do it for my mom's sanity because you know she's a worrier yeah. i'm probably gonna be a worrier you should too. leave you, i mean in all all serious you shouldn't leave the house without your phone your id and insurance cards like there's but if a, you think about it we did that before and we were we all survived <laughs> <laughs> well, the phone, yeah, but like insurance card and ID, you should always have that on you. On a stroller walk? You never know what's going to oh, happen, Julie. My, I'm not bringing my. No, that's ridiculous. But anyway, since I, I don't listen to podcasts on my stroller rides anymore. I used to, but now I don't. I just... You listen to nature. I do. And I, it sounds so cheesy, but I really have... I love listening to the birds. I, I, I always saw it's my... grand season. And I, <laughs> I always saw my grandfather sitting on the porch and we used to visit his um, little house in Pennsylvania when they had their little getaway house. And I never knew how my grandfather could sit on the porch for hours and hours. I'm like, he has nothing. Like, what is he doing out there? We would be inside watching television as kids and he would just be sitting on the porch and I had no idea what it was. And now I finally get it. Mm -hmm. I'm like it swallowing it. I'm swallowing it up and I get it, Pap. So I'm looking at you up there like, I, it's just amazing once you. Well, just the scenery around that house too is was amazing but even the scenery like around our house like i never realized it yeah just the different types of plants the different types of flowers and i seriously like having a mindset like a kid like just seeing things and new eyes it just makes you so grateful for everything you have and now that i'm just being when i'm on my stroller walks and being present and mindful and quote unquote bored i am loving it yeah you know it's funny like i usually listen to music or something like that when i do yard work but today I didn't have anything on, and I was out there with my thoughts, cleaning up the uh, the gardens and stuff like that, and it was cool. And I'm not saying you, I have to do Thinking it all about the time. The podcast like and... that can change, but um, because I listen to podcasts on the way to work, it's like I, I was realizing I was putting too much in. The input was like overload, and I needed yeah. to cut back some. So I realized less is more, just like our home, just like our days. Like when I have less to do or less to put in, it's. I have more freedom for creativity and yeah. thinking and, you know, just the way we're living, I feel like is has a lot to do with space, which is kind of like boredom, like having that empty space that you fill it with, yeah. with what you have in your body, I your agree. thoughts, your ideas. Um, it's a healthy thing. And I kind of already talked about this, but another positive is just more gratitude and less stress. So like looking around at nature while I'm sitting or walking with Lucille and just observing my surroundings, talking to neighbors, like, holy cow. I love Personal to connection neighbors. is it's just so yeah. big. And it's lost right now, I feel. Like, it was great just talking with the neighbors. You know, I'm in the middle of doing yard work and I'm taking one of the bags out to the curb and, you know, they're out there getting ready to do the same thing I am. And so I say, like, hey, you know, how's it going? And, you know, we talk for 15 minutes and we hear about them catapulting 
bowling balls or something like that next that weekend really like cool. you know, i mean it sounded awesome i wish but, we could go see that. you know we wouldn't have had that conversation if you know we were so focused in on what we were doing or if i was wearing headphones or something like that and, and it's kind of sad that we say things like oh my god it was so nice to see the kids playing outside like mm-hmm. that was a normal thing right back in the day and i say back in the day but like 10 years ago that was normal do you ever, you know, it's funny you say that. I don't ever see any of our neighbor's kids with phones or anything like that. They're actually out there playing. I don't either. Riding bikes or anything like that. That gives me hope. Um, yeah. For our neighborhood yeah, generation. I agree. We can't ever move. We have to stay. We, <laughs> we have to stay in this community in and here. disconnect every, all the kids. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's, it's great. I mean, all of our neighbors, well, the majority of our neighbors, you know, are out there and we, we talk with them when they're out there and, you know, it's great. It's, it's a good little neighborhood that we're in. I, I seriously, I want to, I want to live like we're in the nineties. Like I'm really trying to like hone in on that era because it was awesome. Yeah. Like appreciate technology for what it is. And do you be- want a beeper? I never had a beeper, <laughs> so I don't need a beeper. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That, that no. was, that was totally nineties. Um, that way you can put the phone away forever I and know. only call people when they beep you. I'll pass. I think I'll, no, I don't or need can to do start that. a drug operation. Cheesy. What is this breaking bad? Well, that was after. I'm not a chemist. Sorry. Anyways, sorry. (laughs) Um, Just throwing in some humor into this boring conversation that we're having. Oh, so if you guys are bored, just hold on. You could have some really good thoughts during this podcast. Creativity (laughs) might be sparked from our ideas. Um, How are we on time, sweetheart? Good. We're good? Okay. Another positive? One more positive. One more positive. Um, Saving money. We're saving a lot of money. If we weren't bored. And we didn't switch the Geico. If we didn't have time to think about our life, to reflect on how we were living and look at our life as a whole and what we were spending and what we had, we would have never took the time to sit down and budget. Right. And just. Yeah, because that that takes time out of the day. It takes a conversation between you and I and figuring out, you know, what it is that we have to spend or what we already spent for the month that we've gone over budget on this or, you know, we were able to sit down and, and. say you know we're going to be able to pay off our vehicles early we're going to be able to pay off our hvac early which we did which we did like awesome we only have the mortgage left so yeah boredom definitely leads to reflection on just your life in all aspects and looking at our financial situation is very important to us and our future and lucille and we have to constantly reflect and reevaluate because we don't know if what we're doing is working unless we go back and look and see what the hell we're spending well speaking of which i think we owe ourselves a little pat on the back for what for you know we had a budgeting episode i think it was episode four and we were talking about people how we're trying to pay off our debt quickly and and all that stuff we did it except the mortgage but except for the mortgage which that's pretty that's gonna take some time but we we did it so guys it is possible you just have to have a plan absolutely yeah so check out that episode if you want to learn more about budgeting cool pool babe yeah and we've I've heard people have um, they enjoyed our resources. Yeah. So after yeah, listening really to what good resources. resources we were using, they were like, "Oh my god, this is helping. This is working." And mm-hmm. I was just really excited to hear that it could help other people out yeah. there. Yeah. All right. So. You guys bored yet? <laughs> Sorry, I'm scrolling down on my notes no, just to make good. sure I don't um. You're so professional anything. with your laptop today. I, I know. I usually use my phone, but I was like, I'm bringing up the laptop. Yeah. I think we're going to have to get a bigger setup here where we're at a table so both of us can have our laptops in front of us and the microphone. I like that. Or we can get really professional and have two microphones and do all that crap. One day. One day. <laughs> I like sharing with you. Um. So I guess... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sweetheart. So before we dive into resources, um, I wanted to share something that i'm trying and that it's helping me so maybe it can help you so one thing to help plan for more boredom or plan for more or maybe i'll even say to have like a system in place if you find that you're on your phone a lot too for instance my instagram is my weakness and i use it for promoting the podcast and i like to put meaningful things out there but i notice that sometimes i use it not for the good and um just for evil one way to help me set more purpose before doing something for doing anything i thought of some questions that have kind of helped me so like before i do an activity and i feel like i always want to bring my phone for everything 
but I feel like before I have an activity to think about what are my intentions with doing this activity. Like, so if I'm going on a walk, are my intentions to take a video of something? Are my intentions to capture something? Or my intentions are just to be on a walk with Lucille? And that kind of helps put that in my mind already that I I can bring my phone, but I'm not going to need it, right. if that makes any sense. Exactly. So setting intentions before I do anything. And I feel like it's such a reflex to grab my phone for anything. But like, I want to be better. Like when we go on hikes, I feel like, oh, I need to capture this. But it's like, am I going on a hike to capture the nature with my phone? Or am I going on a hike to just walk in nature and explore right. and just reap those benefits? Well, I think a lot of us want to put our, yeah, like you said, capture the nature on our phones and then put it out to everyone else. And like, look, I'm in nature. Live like in the 90s. Yeah. Couldn't do that back then, guys. Um, and another thing is. Well, let's see. Other th- like, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, but uh, The other thing is I, I've been trying to do a little bit more is that. I'm trying not to look at Google and Google stuff when I can't think of it. Like I'm really trying to make Ooh. a better effort. Like the other day when actually when think. your mom asked about that song, and I was like, I'm well, not yeah, gonna look this up. I'm not gonna look band? up. She's who's like, something band? league, something league. And I, and like for a while, I'm like, Justice League? No, that's not right. That's a that's a movie. And then it was Human League. And yeah, that I was able to like pull that's that. Good. You're resisting but the like, reflex I was that like, we I'm not have looking is, at my yeah. phone. And so again, like even though we have information at our in our fingertips and we're smarter than we were like i feel like we're losing like that memory aspect of things just because we can always just go to google so trying to improve my memory and and critical thinking skills i dig it babe human league yeah technology is an amazing tool we just have to use it very very purposely now because it can get we can get carried away with it distracting us definitely um so another question i had and this is like mind blowing to me and I don't know if it's going to be mind blowing to you. But when I take a video or when I take a picture or anything, it's like, do I want to share this to help someone mm-hmm. or do I want to share this to make people jealous of what I'm doing? Mind's blown. And I, it's not I think- like I purposely want to make people jealous, but like, am I taking this photo to make other people go to make other people say like, Oh my gosh, I wish I was there. Oh my God, you look so cute. And I know that those things, of course they're going to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be way more intentional. Am I doing this to really help somebody out there? Like, is this really going to benefit somebody other than me and making me feel good? Or is it, am I just sharing it because I want to hear positive feedback to build myself up, which I shouldn't fill my cup that way. I, it's, it seems really selfish. Well, it's the, it's the like syndrome or the comment syndrome. And what is, what is that? The, that it releases the, um, it's not endorphins, um, dopamine, dopamine. That's what it is. Mm. Yeah. We're, we're addicted to dopamine and it's, we're addicted to likes and hearts and laughters or whatever you can do on Facebook um are addicted to people commenting and saying oh my god you know wish i was there or i'm so jealous and stuff yeah. like that um yeah i i i totally agree with that mindset you know and is this gonna help somebody i, I don't I think you that. do that as much but, as nah. i was guilty of doing and i remember like when i felt really hot or sexy on date nights i would take a selfie of me and of course people would be like oh my god you look good you look good and i think i wasn't doing it to help other people. Like maybe I wanted to, to shout out that date nights are important, but I think right. really the message was like, I felt confident and I just wanted to put it out there cause I felt good. And it's like, yeah. when you feel good, you want to show people how good you look like mm-hmm. the anchorman. Come everyone hey. see how good. <laughs> hey everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. Come see how good I look or whatever. And, Lanolin. It, and I want to get better at that. I want to know, I don't want to have to put that out into the world. Yeah. I want to know that I'm enough and I feel good. And that's, all that I need or you to tell me that or you know not that I need you to tell me too but it's nice when you tell me too I like telling you so I'm trying to be really purposeful because I feel like I was sharing a lot on insta stories and I may have been posting a lot and those two questions have um changed your world huh have really put more intention in how I use technology so yeah What are my intentions with doing this activity and do I want to share this because it's going to bring positive change or because it's going to make someone jealous? I like it. All right. So. Yeah. Resources? Resources. Let's do it. All right. So the resource this week is a podcast episode that I listened to and I told you about it. Link will be in the show notes. 
And there's two people involved because the podcast I listen to is called The Minimalist. But the guest on the podcast was what really sparked like my um, my intrigue. And the guest was Cal Newport, and he is the author of a new book called Digital Minimalism. And it talked about he talked about digital clutter, technology exhaustion, kind of quitting social media and the overall online health. And he brought some really cool statistics in that episode out. And I want to share a couple of them, but I, I really want you guys to listen to the episode too. Yeah. yeah. Um, he talked about that it's not important to hold on to weak ties on social media. And when he says weak ties, he means like maybe people you went to high school with, like people you're afraid to unfriend because you think they're going to notice or, right. you know, maybe you got close with a college roommate, but you don't really see them anymore. So he talked about how it's, you can let go of those weak ties, you can unfriend them and not feel bad because the research shows that when social media makes you feel better or, or adds value to your life, it's only when you can develop intimacy with a group of people that's not physically where you're located. So if you're not developing intimacy with these people yeah. or you're not building any kind of connection with these people, they're just there because you knew them in one part of your life. I don't yeah. know if I'm wording this right. No, that makes that sense. That they don't bring any value to your life. Yeah. Like they're not adding anything to your life. So it should be easier to let go knowing that they're not going to be. Yeah, the chances of you running into that person again is slim to none. Exactly. And if you're like my high school graduation class, you'll never have a reunion ever. <laughs> ever. True. Um. So, yeah, he was saying how it's really it's really good using social media when you can develop intimacy with a group of people that yes. are not where you're physically located. So let's say there's somebody in California that you really resonate with, you have a connection with. Social media is really good in adding value to your life if that is helping, you know, I mean, you can only build intimacy through a social media with someone who's not located in where you are. Right. So he was saying that it's really good for that tool versus people that are local and you have no connection or tie to anymore, don't talk to them. I dig it. I Does like that it. make sense? Yeah. Did I word it okay? I, no, I, okay. I totally get it. He also I'm said, start doing that." <laughs> no, seriously, I have to be on Facebook because of work. Just do a social I'm running, cleanse. Yeah, I'm gonna cleanse. I'm gonna do it this week. So one of the minimalists actually cleansed everyone and started back at zero, which I thought was interesting. I that think that would be really difficult. That's an, an extreme, but I think it's possible for people who really want to just cleanse your social media, just open a new account or start back at zero, and then just start connecting to people who really add value. I agree. I think that's a great idea. Uh, the other thing he mentioned is that research shows that there are two social media behaviors that make you less happy or add to your negative well-being. What's that? Those two things are, he likes to call social snacking, which I thought was interesting. It's when, um, it's the lower friction of communication. I'm sorry. So it replaces personal interaction. Okay. And he gave a great example of like when you have a baby you know, you say congratulations, just like a hundred other people do. He was like, instead of saying congratulations, that is actually adding no any value to their life or your life. Instead, if you're close to that person, go to their home and bring them something. Yeah. Meet them in person because personal connection. Or send them something physical, if physical, you're not in the same yes. state. Yeah. So what he's saying is that physical, physical connection is what's going to add happiness to you. I agree. It's not liking or sending something like. Thank you for petting me. He also talked about saying happy birthday. Remember on Facebook when yeah. like, he was like, that adds nothing to your happiness. Zero. You think you're doing something good, but really it's doing nothing. No. Nope. I thought that was interesting. Um, the other one is social comparison. So looking at other, other people's photos that are perfectly curated, he's like, they're adding nothing to your happiness. Right. And that's what the research is showing. I agree. I can't say that I disagree. So I think he's spot on on all those. Social snacking and social comparison are doing nothing for our well-being. So if that's not enough motivation for you to stop doing that, I don't know what is. Like, yeah. What was this guy's name? Cal? Cal Newport. Cal Newport. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Cal. Right? I appreciate you. Are we ready to uh, shift right. gears to that quote of the day? We are. We are. Let's do it. All right. Quote of the day by Jilly Koselniak. All right. Quote of the day. Mm, excuse me. Ooh, a little burp action. Is actually a book title by Rachel Cruz, but I loved her title of her book. Okay. It's Love Your Life, Not Theirs. 
Yeah. Which kind of goes back to just focusing on you. I like that your quotes are really short and concise. I do my best. Yeah. It's amazing what happens when you're bored, <laughs> when you're mindful, when you're alone with your thoughts. So love so, your life, not there. So focus on you, on what brings you joy and what brings you happy. And that's going to spill over to others. And stop filling the void of being alone or of the empty space. And there's true meaning in it. You just have to find those tools to help you bring more of it into your life. Yeah. And it's really difficult. It's really hard. But it's totally possible. And we've been doing it baby step by baby step. And I mean, the benefits have been fantastic. Now. Yeah. No, that's awesome. <laughs> so the take action from this episode, from all of what we've been talking about, is just be intentional with how you spend your time. And not something and not doing something may be more meaningful than actually doing something. And avoid social snacking and social comparison. <laughs> And just be more mindful and be okay with being bored with yourself. Yes. Just accept it. Stop fearing boredom. I like it. All right, I'm done rambling. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this week's episode. If this was something that you found interesting, you know, take a, a what is that, a screenshot and post it to Instagram. Hopefully you're not Even too bored. You're not too bored. <laughs> um, but, you know, we really appreciate your listenership. And Absolutely. And we, we helped you out. And we will see you next week. See you later, guys. We want to thank everybody for listening today. Please be sure to subscribe and sign up to receive notifications so you know when the next episode is live. If you like today's episode and know someone who could benefit from the topic we covered, please share it with them. And if you have any suggestions for us and want to chime in on today's topic, you can email us at simplifiedchaospodcast at gmail.com, and that's chaos with a K, or send us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you.